I am finishing up on what I was just doing in my last video on reading the Prince of Tyre and how he um, is connected in the Bible and what this is about. So I was on chapter 28, A Proud King Will Fall, and I will start in verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to the Prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because your heart is lifted up and you say, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a God, though you set your heart as the heart of a God. So this is the deception. Because the God of Israel is judging him, telling him that he's not a God. And there are a lot of humans that are angel hybrids and gods in the flesh. I'm one, which I'm a lot more than that. But um, put it shortly, this God of ignorance, the God of Israel, which we don't know his name. It could be anyone. I could. I don't even know who I'm, you know. Exactly his names is hundred million thousand different names or whatever. But um is the heart of God. Behold you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, he's wiser than Daniel. With his wisdom and his understanding you have gained riches for yourself and gathered gold and silver in your treasuries. By your great wisdom in trade, you have increased your riches. The serpent represents wisdom, Lucifer, and the light represents wisdom. If you look it, you look it up in um, Google, research it. Wisdom and knowledge is the serpent, is the eagle. Um, every Native American knows the um, animals that are um, symbolic to wisdom is the snake, the lion, the eagle. Um, all of these are tied into the Bible, are tied into other religions, and are tied into the earth because we all come from mother earth and um going down to verse six because you have set now this is verse yeah therefore says the lord god because you have set your heart as the heart of a god there is the bullshit it says therefore says the lord god and it does not tell you the name of the god and that is why there's so much confusion and that's part of the reason there there's probably wars that's probably why so many people have died because they don't know who they're fighting for they don't know who they're fighting against they're being killed all in the name or the term of God, not the name of God, the bullshit term of God, which could mean any God. You don't even know who you got your God of Israel is. Okay. And, and, and it's saying, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. Okay. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. So he's going to rise nation against, nations and kings against the prince of Tyre. That directly links to Jesus Christ. If you look in the, the how the nations and everyone went against Jesus, um, God put the nations and everyone against the prince of Tyre. Jesus has wisdom. The prince of Tyre has wisdom. Jesus says he's a bright and morning star. The prince of Tyre falls down like lightning out of heaven. Um, and is cast down to earth, to, to the bottomless pit. Um, they say that that's Satan. They say that's Lucifer. No, no, no. It's the Prince of Tyre. It's Jesus Christ in the form of another man who is Lucifer, who has nothing to do with Satan, who is not. Christians get so much shit confused because they don't know their facts. They don't know anything about the spiritual world. They don't understand what they're reading. They mistranslate it in their own ideas. I mean, but literally, the connection to Tyrus and Lucifer is outstanding, and people confuse the Prince of Tyrus with Lucifer, and people say, oh, Lucifer fell from heaven, but no, this is talking about the Prince of Tyre. And it doesn't say the light fell from heaven, because Lucifer means light, and the light cannot fall from heaven. That's impossible, unless heaven was destroyed. <coughs> Jesus was the light of heaven. Jesus was the light of earth. Going into the Prince of Tyre. Okay, because your heart is lifted up and you say, I am a God, I sit in the seat of gods in the midst of the seas, yet you are a man and not a God. That you set your heart as the heart of a God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hidden from you. With your wisdom and your understanding, you have gained riches for yourself. And gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. 
By your great wisdom and trade, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have set your heart as the heart of a God, therefore I will bring strangers against you, the most terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall throw you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the midst of the sea. The beast comes out of the sea. The beast directly links not only with Satan, but with God. And so much different information if you look it up. The beast directly links with the God of Israel, who is a false god, who is the devil. It directly links, the Prince of Tyre directly links Lucifer and Jesus together, all three into one. And I will get more into that as I progress and teach more about this and learn more about, you know, about it myself. Um, all I can do is read the information. You don't have to believe in it. Whatever. Humans believe what they want to believe anyway. So we go down to, they shall throw you down into the pit. So this God wants to bring out his swords. He wants to slain and kill him just because he has wisdom and he's beautiful. And he's, he's the Prince of Tyre has splendor. He's wise. He's, he's no knowledgeable. He's rich. And the God of Israel, he's, he's, he's a jealous fuck. He just wants to kill him. He wants to slay him. He wants to bring the nations against him. He wants to kill him with a sword. This is the god of war that this prince of Tyre is dealing with, that the whole world is still dealing with today. So, and then he says, Will you still say before him who slays you, I am a god? But you shall be a man and not a god in the hand of him who slays you. Okay. In verse 9, will you, okay, where you say before him who slays you, I am a god, but you shall be man and not a god in the hand of him who slays you. You shall die in the, in the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of aliens. Aliens could represent anything. It could, be, could mean fallen angels. It could mean demons. It could mean humans, you know, um, kings and people, uh, rulers from other nations across the world. There we go. You know, that could be anything, and there's the issue there. For I have spoken, says the Lord God, and there's the other issue there, the term God without the name, the term aliens without the explanation. And in verse 11, more, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, or Tyre, whatever his name is, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. This, as um, people say, was the fall of Lucifer. This is talking about the fall of the Prince of Tyre, not the fall of Lucifer. But it's describing what Lucifer looks like. Lucifer has gems upon his entire body, because I've seen him. He's talked to me. He has gems upon his white, white, glorious, shining, bright dress, and he has six large wings, and he has white, long hair. And um, this talks about, you know, everything on the Prince of Tyrus, that he was wisdom, that he was knowledgeable, he was full of beauty. And yes, the Prince of Tyrus was indeed God, but the God of Israel was jealous and angry, so he wanted to take him down. Because any other God, the God of Israel takes as a threat and wants to murder them, kill them, destitute them, burn them in fire, kill, their, he, kill the humans that are worshipping them, sacrifice them in fire, and send them to hell. This God of Israel is not a loving God. He, you know, they say he's just, they say he's merciful, but I mean, the Prince of Tyre, obviously it says that he was, um, it, it talks about he was perfect. He was lifted up in his beauty. So he had confidence. He had some pride in himself. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Prince of Tyre or people having confidence or pride in themselves. In fact, that is something that God should never take away from a human being is your confidence and your pride. Because if you don't have those things, you're not going to get anywhere in the in, 
really you're not going to get anywhere at all if you don't have confidence if you don't have wisdom if you don't have understanding like the prince of tyre where are you going to go in life or in the divine you're going to be limited and the god of israel likes people and gods to be limited other gods and humans to be below him to be under him because he thinks he's the most divine now the nag Hammadi talks about this asshole god of israel and it clearly depicts and tells us the God of Israel is uh, Sabaoth, or um, also known as y Yaldabaoth and Sabaoth, which are separate gods that are the, the dick in the Bible that tries to control everything, that tries to kill people and sacrifice them just because they worship a different god or just because of something, a, a choice that they make. Humans are so much more intelligent than, than, this, than, this, uh, than this bullshit, I, or at least I am. I mean, <laughs> y'all are, are so misled if you if you believe that the God of Israel is, is the good guy. The whole world's fucking doomed if you believe that shit. The whole world's fucking doomed. Not only the whole world, but your your souls are doomed because you're worshiping the devil. Because this God of Israel, he he's slaying the the, the king of Tyre, you know, and you know he. He's just vengeance, war, anger, hate, um, kill, kill, murder constantly throughout the Bible, um, bloodshed, sacrifice. <laughs> I don't understand how Jesus could be attributed to the to this dick at all, because Jesus is nothing like this dick, and Jesus is Lucifer, the good guy, and I feel like he is the way to go. I truly do feel, but. At the same time, there is information floating around from Christians that is almost like darkness coming to choke me. This Christian that the that the that these that these Christians that talk about Jesus is the only way, um, they limit themselves. They limit their own powers. They limit their understanding. They don't try to to understand more deeper into the Bible or past the Bible. They do stay stuck in it. And that's where they're going to be ignorant and they're not going to reach up to the fifth dimension. They're not going to reach up past the fourth dimension, probably. They're going to stay in the third dimensional uh, time capsule of this matrix earth that we're living in. And they're going to be reincarnated over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Until they finally learn to not be a slave to the Scott anymore. You know, you guys need to stand up and realize here who the beast really is. Okay, so it's talking about the Prince of Tyre was the one in the Garden of God. And people would assume that that would be the snake or the serpent, but it doesn't say that. So just because it says that the Prince of Tyre was in the Garden of God, that he was covered in, in gemstones and emeralds, this is the work of who knows, turning Lucifer into the Prince of Tyre and just mixing, mashing everything. And they could be the same. Or it might not be. It could be pure deception. Who knows? All I know is my experiences. And it says, you know, you will die the death of the uncircumcised by the hands of aliens. For I have spoken, says Lord God, no name. So there's the issue again. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, take up lamentation for the king of Tyre. Oh, yeah, I already read that. You were in, okay, verses 14. You were the anointed cherub who covers. Who was the cherub? They say Lucifer was a cherub um, angel. I've heard uh, people say Lucifer's an archangel. And there are many different um, levels and hierarch hierarchies and kingdoms of Lucifer that you guys don't have no fucking clue about. And there's different kingdoms of, of God. There's so many different heavens that you guys are so ignorant you don't even know. It's not just one heaven, one hell. Okay, you guys are just... Anyways, there's so many books that are left in, out of the Bible, but okay, so we're going to just finish um, verse 14. You were the anointed cherub who covers, I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. You were perfect in in your ways. So this was a perfect human being who was a king of Tyrus. 
He had gemstones. He was there in the Garden of Eden. He was perfect. He was walking amongst the fiery stones. He was walking on the mountain of God. They say this is Lucifer. That's the false doctrine in the church from every false Jew, every false person alive basically preaches this shit that it's the same as Lucifer. But the Bible doesn't even say that. In fact, it probably is the same. It's probably Lucifer in the flesh uh, born as King Tyre, just like Jesus came down in the flesh of Jesus. Yehoshua came down in the flesh or whatever. And, um, and then it talks about every precious stone was his covering. Okay, verse 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Violence. Violence. He, okay. Now, God's talking about violence, but the God of the Bible is the most violent one. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing. So, all of a sudden, he's profane, even though he was perfect. See how God corrupts this God? Out of the mountain of God. And I d destroyed you, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. So, he wants to absolutely destroy and kill and set swords and nations and kings against Tyre just because he was perfect, full of wisdom and beauty and proud in himself and he was um, you know, collecting silver and gold or whatever. Um, I should probably look into more into that eventually about why this happened. Because I haven't read the I don't remember if I read the entire story or not about why all this came to be. But it says for somehow he sinned, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. You know, it's good to be um, confident because of your beauty and, and your wisdom and your splendor. But I guess it depends on how it affects the human mind and soul and how it affects you affecting others. So, I mean, if, you're, if you think you're all that and you start killing people because of it, of course God's going to take you out. I would understand. If the human being starts killing first without God having commanded him to do so, then, okay, maybe he should be taken down. But it says that he was perfect. So how could a perfect king of Tyre all of a sudden sin out of nowhere and God curses him and tries to destroy him in the fire of stones, as the Bible says? <sighs> And this, remember, this God is God, God who sacrifices many times in the Bible, commands sacrifice and murder. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were the, on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth. Okay, I read that. And verse, I was on verse 17. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Okay, so obviously he thinks trading is wrong. I don't know why. Um, probably because there's a lot of humans that are killed in the trading process, and there's slavery that happens in the trading process, but the God of Israel promotes slavery and killing, so it doesn't really make sense. And there is a contradiction there's so many millions, so many different contradictions in the King James Version and any English version. It says, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Verse 18, you defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought you fire from your midst. It devoured you. So he just killed him with a violent fire after kings went against him, after he was slain, after he was thrown to the bottomless pit, after he was cursed by God. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and you shall be no more forever. So this God is not no love at all. I don't know why you guys worship this asshole. But um, I used to worship him, too, thinking that this was all good, that he was, you know, the, the divine one. But I think there's a much better God than this. And because there's no way the sick, twisted dick could be the perfect creator of the, the entire 
um, universe. He might be the creator of the Earth, possibly, in which there's more than one creator of the Earth. In fact, you'll have entities, tell, you know, that will speak about this to me, and they have, you know, one in particular, which I'm not going to talk about right now, because I have to have a certain thing um, going for that. I'll eventually speak what is the mysteries, what I've been shown. I've only shown, told you that so far I have met Satan a few times. I've spoken to him in hell. I've literally gone through the lake of fire. He tried, fire was trying to burn me. It would not burn me because I was in my angelic form. And I used it to uh, suck in as power, I should say. And um, basically... I'm going to go back to the Bible, and we're going to go to verse 20. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face towards Sidon, and prophesy against her, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Sidon. Okay, now, okay. That's all extra stuff. I'm going to stop there. That was the king of Tyre. I started reading from um, my last video that I just now made, which I haven't even downloaded to YouTube yet. And this is the second part of the Prince of Tyre. Now I'm going to get into other scripture. I'm going to get into the word El El Yon, which is God the Most High, how that's translated into the word Hallelujah, how that... Um, goes into the word light, how that goes into the word Jesus, how that goes into the sun, the word Lucifer, how it's all tied and interconnected into one. Now, many have heard the term El Elyon, God the Most High. El in Hebrew means to shine, glitter, irradiate, and splendor, iridation, glory, and root. The roots A and E in the book of Psalms, which abounds in phrases of sun worship that it occurs also in the term hallelujah. When you say hallelujah, you're worshiping the wrong Jehovah, the false god. Hallelujah in praise or worship of the Most High, El Elyon. Hallelujah goes into the word E, J E, Halel, E E L, separated into three. Um, words. Going back to the original hallelujah. Elu i-e which is e-l-l-u slash i-e slash e-l-l e-l-e-u slash i-e. So it's going way back. The word hell in hallelujah h-e-l is ancient root is the ancient root to shine, as in the Greek helios, sun, in Hebrew, helel, means bright, and the Finnic word hell means bright. The soft H interchanges with the SI and other languages. SOL for soul, or SIL, is in the same word for sun in Latin, that is soul. We all have a soul. The soul is connected to the sun, which is a lake of fire, which is all about God. They're trying to make sun worship as God. They're trying to make the sun as God. And this is the information I got from the internet of what the word El Elyon really represents and how it concludes to the light and Lucifer, who is God the Most High. Um, goes into the word soul. If you look in ancient Hebrew, or I should say, I'm not sure if it's ancient, I think it's modern. So, of course, things are mistranslated, changed by higher powers that really have evil intentions. And the um, Akkadian and um, Turkish word sil from the word shine, from, you know, it's all going into that. Now looking into the Hebrew text, the modern version Bibles have the term morning star, day star, the book of Revelation, the word the word kokab in Hebrew is star. The word um, halal is in from the word hallelujah. Um, 
you got H A L L, which is hall. It's actually an E. They translated hell into hall. So it's actually hell. Hallelujah. You're worshiping hell. You're worshiping the sun. The Catholics. The church. You go to church on a Sunday. It's got pagan roots for worship revolving around the sun, which literally has nothing to do with the fucking planet. It literally goes into real gods. And now humans are trying to make it seem like these gods are not real. You've got History Channel deceiving the world now, trying to make all religions revolve around the sun and the moon, basically denying the existence of Jesus Christ. But even Jesus Christ himself declares he is the bright morning star. And it goes into Revelation in chapter 22, verse 10. You have to realize the bright and morning star is the sun in our sky that keeps us alive, that rises in the morning and sets at dawn. Set is an Egyptian god. You've got the morning star rising. You have Jesus rising to power. You have Satan that rose to power, is in control of the world now. You have the morning star rising going from an orange, beautiful sunset all the way up into the sky that keeps us alive, that keeps humanity alive, that keeps the plants alive. Without the sun, we wouldn't even be alive right now. And that's the real lake of fire. That's where your soul's going to go, wherever. If you believe that, you don't have to. I think it's a bunch of shit. But, um, basically, I do conclude by my own belief or idea by scientific reasoning, the sun is a literal lake of fire, ball of gas that's sitting 10,000 degrees way up, way, you know, it's way bigger than the earth. The earth can fit inside it. In fact, you can fit many earths inside the sun. And there's more than one sun because there was a second, there was a second sun, um, just found. It's like a baby sun and it's, um, smaller. And, um, I think they might have found more than two suns and they might have found three but there is a mini sun that they just found out recently about who knows if they're going to make a religion into that or, or whatnot. Or try to make worship um, revolve around the smaller sun like they're already doing with our larger sun. Okay, now you also have to realize the lake of fire could be in a volcano. Now we're, now we're thinking about real facts here. We're not thinking of some lake of fire in midair in space floating around. That's not logically possible. The lake of fire could be volcanoes. It could be a volcano in Hawaii. It could be volcanoes anywhere. It could be a hole in the ground with um, with the heat and the fire that's within the earth because the core of the earth is like over, was it 50,000 degrees? It's hotter than the sun, the core of the earth. And that is why the ground, it gets so hot because the sun is hitting the ground. And that's why we have to wear shoes because our heat cannot, the, the heat, um, our feet cannot handle the heat from the sun of the dark cement that's being impacted by the sun in the sky and being impacted by the heat of the earth at the same time. So literally, we have just the moon that's basically keeping us alive because if we didn't have the moon, we would probably... something would happen and we might not be alive if we didn't have the moon or the sun. And they revolve and go around each other and religions go revolve around them all the time now in the book of revelation chapter 22 verse 16 i jesus have sent mine angel to give you this testimony for the churches i am the root and the offspring of david that means his mother might may or may not have been a virgin because he's saying he's the offspring of david I don't want to say Mary was never a virgin. You know, I believe that it's very possible she could have been impregnated by the angel Gabriel. They say, you know, that he's the son of God, that Jesus is the son of God. But it talks about in the Quran and in the Bible, Mary became pregnant from the angel Gabriel, who went through her, through her body, went through her body, um, and she became pregnant with Jesus. Now, the Christian church, of course, with their false doctrines, they preach that Jesus is the Son of God. The Bible, the Bible actually teaches that she became pregnant by the angel Gabriel, and this is how she became pregnant with Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not saying that he's not the Son of God. I'm not saying that, but I'm just telling you what, what the Bible says. 
you could take it however you want to. You could still believe in the Lord, and that's fine. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just helping people to wake up to the truth and realizing what Scripture says, and not only Scripture, but um, books outside of Scripture and real information and real logic that connect with the divine. Because I have special gifts and abilities that shouldn't be thrown away. So, now we're talking about Jesus and the connection to the sun, to uh, Lucifer, the bright and morning star. And re in Revelation twenty two sixteen, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Bright morning star. In 1 John chapter 9, ver verses 5, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And who's the God of the world? Satan. So who's the light of the world? Jesus. Who's the light within the world? Jesus. Who's the light above our world? The sun. Weird connection. Really weird connection. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain. And you will do well to pay attention to it. As to a light shining in a dark place. Until the day star rises in your hearts. Let me read that again. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place until the day star rises in your hearts. Hallel. Do you know where that word comes from? The original name of Lucifer back way when was Hallel ben Shahar. He has many, many names of Jesus. Many names, Lucifer. Many names, Satan. It all goes in together. I don't even... It, get, it can really get confusing because there's so many contradictions in the Bible as well. But now we go down to Revelation chapter 2, verse 28. I will also give him the morning star. Well, now what, I don't even think I can understand what that means. I don't know if God's Jesus is going to give us the sun. I don't know what that means. Maybe it means that he is the one that put the sun above the earth to keep us alive. And in doing so, he's given us the morning star. He's given us the sun in our sky to keep us alive. That's how I take it, because I wouldn't understand what he would mean otherwise when Jesus says, I will also give you the morning star in Revelation 2.28. So then we go to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. And the word dawn represents the sun, Helios. And the, and the word dawn represents Lucifer and Satan. It goes into a lot of things. In Psalms chapter 82... Okay, nope, that was talking about the Prince of Tyre. We've already read about that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and read this anyway. Um, that isn't the wrong, that is the wrong one. Okay. Um, Galatians chapter 4, verse 14. Nobody believes, people believe that Jesus was God. You obviously don't read your Bibles. There's contradiction after contradiction. He never claimed to be God. And in Galatians chapter 4 verse 14, it clearly says, And my temptation which was in my flesh, Jesus was tempted in his flesh. And my temptation which was in my flesh, you despised not or rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Let me read that again. Galatians chapter 4 verse 14. Jesus says, And my temptation which was in my flesh, you despised not. So you didn't despise Jesus in the flesh. You didn't reject him. But you received him, him as an angel of God. Even as Christ Jesus. And which you will do now if you understand that Christ Jesus is indeed Lucifer. As an angel of God. Galatians chapter 4 14. Then we go to Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 1. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. So this God thinks he can just judge all the other gods. Because that's how he works. 
course not. You're not the in, if you're not the God, if you're not the most high God, and you're only the God of Israel, and you're not the God of everybody else in the entire world, the Chinese, the Asians, the, the whites, you're not, then he's still going to try to judge other gods anyway. Like, he has the place. <sighs> Stuff makes me frustrated. Goodness gracious. Um, and in chapter 28, verse 2, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In verse 5, the gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk in darkness. All foundations of the earth are, are shaken. So that... I'm just going to call that an opinion, because it sounds like a bullshit opinion to me. It doesn't sound like the words of God, or the God of Israel. So the God of Israel, basically, he thinks that the gods are in darkness, and he thinks, or his opinion is, that the gods are ignorant and dumb. When really, it's him. So, it just sounds like plain opinion to me. It doesn't sound factual whatsoever. I mean, um, in verse 6, he said, I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. And now there's false Christian preaching that say, because that the serpent deceived Adam and Eve. He didn't deceive. It was already a plan. The, the tree of knowledge and evil was created for a reason. It wasn't created just to fucking sit there and just to, to have God torture you and say, oh, I'm going to kill you if you eat this piece of fruit and burn you in hell. Oh, I'm going to burn you in hell if you touch that piece of fruit and cast you out of the garden. You can't ever come back from my paradise. The, 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 the tree of garden of, of knowledge of good and evil was there and set in place for a reason and a divine purpose. And this false god did not understand or comprehend the reason and the ability why the tree of knowledge of good and evil and wisdom and understanding was there. Because humans needed it. And without the tree of knowledge, we would be dumb as fuck. And humans are already dumb. Like, we need to get out of dumbness, we need to get past ignorance, and if I had that tree in front of me, I'd probably take five pieces of fruit, and I would listen to that serpent wholeheartedly, and I would take, like, I would be, like, grabbing that shit, stuffing it in my pants, and walking out eating. Because it would give you so much knowledge, and so much wisdom, that you would know a whole lot more than we do now. Now, imagine she only took one bite. And now look at the world. The whole world is shit-fucked, but at the same time, we have technology, we have science, we have knowledge, we have information in all different forms, in all different books, in all different places. We have schools, and and knowledge and, and is persistent everywhere. And, um... So then we go in ver verse, verse 6, when he said, I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. And they say God never said that. They said, they said the serpent said that. But what did I say? The serpent is linked to God. Is linked as if he is Satan. So then in verse 6 it says that God said you are gods. You are sons of the most high. Verse 7. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. And in verse 7 when God says we will die like mortals. He was talking to the prince of Tyre that people think is Lucifer. The one, that, you know, Prince of Tyre, he had gems. He was perfect from the Garden of Eden. He walked amongst the mountain of God. He was wisdom, full of perfection and beauty. But his wisdom and his beauty made him prideful or whatever. That was the Prince of Tyre, not Lucifer. As the, as the Bible describes it. And God is angry, pissed off. He kills him. He destroys him in fire. He sets swords and nations and kings against this this guy. And he's and then he says, now going back to now going back to twenty eight verse six, he says, You are the most high. We are all children of the most high, but we will all die like mortals and will fall like every other ruler. That's basically talking to humanity because humans die all the time. This is the curse of this God. If it wasn't for this 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 false Bible God, we would probably still be living forever. And Lucifer, Jesus, the true Lord, Lucifer, would really be um, giving us more knowledge and information, and we wouldn't be stuck as probably stuck as slaves here. Who knows? I really don't know. It's just ideas.
going on in my head right now. So I'm not going to say what I'm saying is absolute facts or proof, but I am finding a lot of evidence on what I'm saying, what I'm researching, a lot of different things. And um, it can really get mind-altering, mind-boggling, very confusing. It really gets into playing with the soul almost. Like you don't know after you die where you're going to go. And it can be intimidating for a lot of people because they don't seek divine knowledge. They don't seek understanding. They don't seek wisdom. Uh, Christians love to be in ignorance. They, they will die in ignorance. And it's sad. It's sad to say, same with Jews and Muslims. They're going to die in ignorance. If they don't start looking outside the Quran, which they need to do, start looking outside the Bible, you're going to be a pathetic fucking fool. And, I mean, you're so lost if you only follow by the Bible. You, were, If you're atheist, to be honest, atheists have more understanding and knowledge than, than a fucking religious person does. A religious person is so stupid compared to an atheist. And an atheist doesn't even know anything about... The thing is, with atheists, I notice, they study scripture, they get into different scriptures, and they know about these things more than the average religious person. And that's why they're atheists. They see there's so much shit that doesn't make any logical sense. And they understand this. Now, the only reason why I'm not atheist is because I've had way too many experiences with demons and shadows and Jesus and Satan that I cannot, cannot even count, and it's not even... I've had about as much as experiences as probably a prophet in the Bible has had. And so there's no possible way I could ever want to go back to being an atheist because it would just be a waste of my life being atheist. There would be no point. And looking... All right. So this is done. I am done with these two videos for now. I will be making more on the subject of... of um my research looking into who God is and his many different names. I will be, you know, looking into that. Um, I, I am very concerned with the information I give because I don't want to deceive um, people. I'm a person of truth. No matter how hard or cold the truth is, I will, s if I have to slam it in people's faces for them to fucking wake up before their deathbed hits, then I will. I've also had a demon that's been following me for a while that's been screeching in my house the past couple of days, or at least I thought it was, it happened to be my mom's phone, but there is a shadow that has been following me at night. <sighs> I've seen it walking back and forth chanting, um, you know, one time because I was, you know, at nighttime, this was a couple months ago. And there are witches that I have been battling in my home, spiritually, that cannot be seen. They're shielded with with whatever. Something's covering them and making them invisible. They were casting spells upon me. I, I um, took care of that, basically. Kind of put a shield around myself, and among other things, I will not reveal. But, um... Disintegrated, and, and I destroyed, killed off random darkness I didn't even know it was around me or at least I thought I did and being in my own ignorance and because I'm born into ignorance because I was born as a human I'm not really a human I don't know how I eat I don't remember exactly how I became a human but this is in the time where we're entering in the, into the fifth dimension and you have to go back into remembrance and what I mean by remembrance is you have to go back to who you are your divine God self within your flesh because we are all gods. We are all sons of God the Most High. When I say God the Most High, I'm not, I may, may not be talking about the God of Israel. It could be anybody that we don't really know because Jewish culture has taken on a life of its, of its own through murder and sacrifice and lies and deception and hate and anger and, um, commu communi communism, co commun communism is really religion. Communism stems from Judaism and Islam. They will kill you if you worship any other gods because they're an evil, sick, piece of shit religions. And that, that are not even close to the words of Jesus when he says, forgive your enemy. Just forgive your enemy. Like, what is wrong with these people? There's so much deception and hate going on. The government's really playing people. I don't know what they're doing. There's so much information, uh, wish-washy information about 
uh, Christians having dreams about Jesus that don't they don't even depict what he looks like. Um, Christians having dream dreams about Barack Obama, how they assume that he's the Antichrist, but they have no proof. Like, they automatically assume he's the Antichrist just because their vision was a scary vision or seemed a little off because he didn't talk in his vision or whatever. Just weird shit like that. And this is a time where people are losing their minds. I've been losing mine. Um, I'm trying to hold my mind together with the uh, uh, divinity that I hold within myself. And do not let people destroy the idea of the serpent at the Garden of Eden. Because that is what will save humanity in the end. I really, truly do believe. If you only think of yourself as a carnal human with sin, then that's all you're going to be because that's all you think you are. I know I'm beyond more than that. We're already here. Some of us are born as humans. Some of us came directly from heaven a couple weeks ago. Some of us, uh, a lot of humans don't even know who they are because we're born into ignorance and forgetfulness and we lost our places in heaven, whatever. I don't even remember how. A lot of people lost their, uh, their, um, you know, where they were in the military of God, the armies of God and stuff. I don't remember how, but, um... All I know is that I think I might be a part of something great. And, of course, I know more, you know, about who I am. But, of course, that's not going to be revealed. Because there's not a single person in this whole world that deserves to even hear it at this point. Um, because of the ignorance and the widespread uh, bullshit of um, religious 